Hey folks, this is a video on section 1.7. I'm actually going to take this section and split it into three separate videos. So hang on tight. We're going to cover a lot in this section. Um, this whole section is going to be dealing with inequalities, several different types, linear, three-part, quadratic, rational. The first uh, thing I want to run through with you is some properties of inequalities. Um, the first property here is basically telling you that if you have an inequality, A is less than B, um, then you're allowed to add or subtract the same thing on both sides. That's all property number one says. Property number two says that if you have an inequality and if C is positive, then you're allowed to multiply by the same thing on both sides. So really property one and two are not very unique. They're not odd. They're not weird. Um, you can add, subtract, or multiply um, the same thing on both sides. Now with multiplying, it has to be a positive number. Property number three though, this is the oddball. Notice that I have an inequality and I'm gonna take a negative number. C is less than zero means negative. And when I multiply by my negative number on both sides, notice that my sign changed from a less than sign to a greater than sign. So this is the oddball property, and here's the English version of it. If you multiply or divide on both sides by a negative, be sure to switch the inequality. And that's um, essentially what this statement down here says. Always remember to switch the direction of the inequality symbol when you are multiplying or dividing by a negative number. Um, so the first kind of example we're going to be looking at are linear inequalities. And this is just code for saying that we don't have any powers in these. We don't have a square or a cube or anything like that. Um, so that's all that this is um, talking about. So the first one that we're going to solve is um, example number one here. It actually looks quite simple. Um, if you had an equality or an equation, you would simply subtract 7 on both sides. So let's do the same thing with our inequality because we're allowed to add and subtract the same thing on both sides. So when we do this, we're going to get negative 2x is less than negative 12. And then, of course, we will divide by negative 2 on both sides. But remember, anytime you add, I'm sorry, anytime you multiply or divide by a negative on both sides, be sure, be sure, be sure to switch your inequality. So you'll notice that the left side reduces to x, the right side reduces to 6. But I switched from a less than symbol to a greater than symbol. Now, the next part of this is this table, and this is actually a great table. I'm not gonna do every single block on this table, but I'm gonna walk you through several of these. You can go in and fill the rest of them in yourself, and, um, and you can um, see how to do this on your own. All right, so um, what we have here is we've got set builder notation, graphing notation, and interval notation. These are three different ways to name the same set. So for instance, um, you guys as students would call me Miss Roberts. Um, my parents would call me by, by, by my nickname, Mel. Um, and then my nieces and nephews are gonna call me Aunt Mel. So just because I have three different names doesn't mean that I'm three different people. Um, it's the same person, it's just three different names for the same person. Well, this is essentially what's going on here. I have three different names. One of them is the set builder notation, one of them is a graphing, and the other one is the interval notation. It's three different ways of naming the same set of numbers. So let's just go ahead and jump into an example. We wanna look at the set of real numbers greater than A. Personally, I think the easiest way to do this is to look at the graph so if I have all the numbers in the world greater than A, I know that um, it's going to be to the right-hand side of A. Notice it says greater than A. It doesn't say greater than or equal to A. So I'm not actually allowed to include the number A. So I'm going to use around parentheses. This means you cannot stand on the number, on the number A. Um, you can only use the number right after the A. The interval notation is going to look exactly like your graph. Um, so you're going to use your parentheses because that's the first thing that comes through in left to working left to right. Um, the very first number that you're working with is your A. 
And the very last, 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 last number is not the B, it's gonna be a positive infinity. Now the next question is, well, do I put, um, am I gonna include the infinity or not include the infinity? Well, here's the thing. You can try to stand on infinity all you want to, but all you have to do is move one more step to the right and you're at a new infinity. So you cannot stand on infinity, so we're gonna use around parentheses to show that. Now for set builder notation, there's a couple of things that you will always, always do. Um, set builder notation always begins with a curly Q bracket and it always begins with an X and a bar. That bar stands for such that. So the way that this reads so far is the set of X's such that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to describe um, what our numbers are doing. And we can get that description from here. We can get that description from our graph. These are all of the numbers greater than A. And remember, all of the numbers is shown by X. So uh, X is greater, all of my numbers are greater than A. And we're going to close with a curly Q bracket. So the way that we would read that is X such that all of my numbers are greater than A. Now let's look at the second example. Second example is very similar to the first example, but this time all of my numbers are greater than or equal to the number A. So we're still looking at all these numbers to the right, but now that I'm allowed to equal the number A, I'm gonna use a square bracket. Square bracket says you're including this number. My interval will look the same we're gonna start at A, we're using the square bracket because we're including the letter A or the number A, and we're gonna go all the way to positive infinity. You still can't include the positive infinity because you can't actually reach it, so it's still gonna have um, a, a round parentheses. As far as my description, you're going to have curly Q bracket, X such that X is greater than or equal to A. Now, let's go ahead to uh, the, the third option. And I numbered them here just so that we would um, all be able to look at the same thing at the same time. Um, the set of real numbers less than B. So if I'm less than B, I'm having all these numbers to the left of B. Notice it says less than, not less than equal to. So I'm going to use a round parentheses. My interval will start at negative infinity. You always have, these numbers have to go in order from left to right. So I'm starting way down here. That very first number is negative infinity. And then I'm not ending until I get to the B. Since I'm not including the B, I'll use a round parentheses on that. My set builder notation, X such that all of my numbers are less than B. Now let's skip down to the fifth example. You can do the fourth example on your own, or you can go to the e-text and you can see what goes in that fourth example. Um, in the fifth example, you have the set of real numbers between A and B. So I'm looking at all of the numbers between. Notice it doesn't use anything about equal to or including or anything like that. So I'm not including the A and B. Uh, this is non-inclusive. My interval will look exactly like the graph does from A to B with round parentheses on both. Now, for my set builder notation, we have all of the numbers, so that's going to be X, and all of my numbers are between A and B. So I'm actually going to write an A on the one side and a B on the other side. And here, I'm always, 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 always going to use a less than symbol. The question is, is am I going to use a less than or am I going to use a less than equal to? Um, and since I'm not including either the A or the B, then I know for sure that there are no equal to's in my set builder notation. Now you might think that this um, symbolization is a little weird, but let me explain this just a little further. Only look at this piece. Yes, you could read this A is less than X. But you could also read it x is greater than a because x has the larger end of that um, symbol. So x is greater than a. And when you look at the picture, all of my x's are greater than a. And then you could also look at the second half of this x is less than b. Yes, all of my x's are less than 
B. Now let's jump down to the seventh option where it says we have the set of real numbers greater than A and less than or equal to B. So we're greater than A, but we're also less than or equal to B. My uh, interval will be from A to B. Notice I'm including the B, but I am not including the A. And for my set builder notation, we'll have X such that, again, since this is a between type of concept, We'll put the X between the A and B. For the A, we're only going to use a less than. For the B, we'll use a less than equal to. And then we'll jump down to number nine. The set of real numbers less than A. Notice it only says less than, so we'll use a round. Or greater than B. Again, it doesn't use um, an equal to, so we'll use the um, round parentheses. All right, so my um, interval notation, we will start at negative infinity and we'll take a stop, we'll take a pit stop, a, a break at A. We're going to combine this, so we use a U for union. We're going to combine this with the next part of my set, which will start at B and end at positive infinity. And for my set builder notation, it also is going to be broken into two pieces. So we have x such that x is less than a or, and we're actually going to write the word or, x is greater than b. Last but not least, the set of all real numbers. So we want to, we want to color the whole entire line. Set of all real numbers is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. And my set builder notation, there's actually two ways you can write this. Um, you could write x such that, and in words, x is all real numbers. Um, I'm going to write it in, in a very geeky way um, where I use x. This symbol means is an element of, and this symbol means real numbers. So when you read this, it actually says x is an element of real numbers. So again, you can either use words to write that, x is all real numbers, or you can use the symbols. All right, now let's put these into practice with some solving. So notice here that we're solving another inequality, and um, we want to get our variables on one side, we want to get our numbers on the other side. And so let's go ahead and we'll subtract 2x from both sides, and we'll also subtract 3 from both sides. So I'm moving the x's to the left, and I'm moving the numbers to the right. Combine like terms, and you'll get a negative 6x is greater than or equal to 5. Divide on both sides by negative 6. Make sure, make sure, make sure when you divide on both sides by a negative that you trade, switch around the inequality. Now, I want to stop right here. This is our solution, but notice we were given a specific set of instructions. We were told to give the solution set an interval notation. What we have right now is we almost have set builder notation. So I just want to practice this with you. If you're told to give set builder notation, then what you would do is you would just put your X such that and your curly Q brackets around your answer and that's your solution set. Sorry, your, um, your set builder notation set. Um, but we weren't asked for that. We were asked for interval notation. Sometimes interval notation is easier to get after you have a graph. So let's go ahead and graph this. We want all of the numbers less than or equal to negative 5, 6. So we want everything to the left of negative 5, 6. Once I have it like this, it's much easier to get the interval notation. So we'll have from negative infinity all the way to negative 5, 6. What do you do then if you have a three-part inequality? Notice this inequality is different than what we had before. We have two symbols. So what you're gonna do, um, think about if the only part that you had to worry about was this, you would simply add eight to both sides. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add eight, not to just two sides, but to all three pieces, all three sides, if you will. So then the very left part is gonna be a nine, the middle part will be a 6x, and the right part will be a 12. And I'm just carrying down my signs. 
And now what I'll do is I'll divide all three pieces by a six, and then I'll reduce my fractions. So that first fraction is gonna be a three halves, the last fraction will be a two. If I wanted set builder notation, then all I would need to do would be to put in my X such that and my curly Q brackets. That would satisfy set builder notation, but I wasn't asked for set builder, I was asked for interval notation. So what we'll want next then is we'll want our graph. And um, notice that X is between three halves and two. So we're gonna color everything in between and we also have brackets because both of these have an equal to. All right, and then once we have that, it's really simple to get the interval notation. So it'll be from three halves to two. All right, I'm gonna stop this video um, here and pick up in another video um, dealing with quadratic inequalities.